timestamps can be found in the description. Okay, that was a little bit of a tough watch. Uh, guys, today I watched, technically re-watched, but I watched it not during the holidays, so therefore I didn't review it. Today I finished Spree. This movie stars Joe Keery, a.k.a. Uh, Henderson from Stranger Things, one of my favorite characters, not that it matters and not that you care, in a, in a strange ride. Now, before I describe this film, I want it to be known that the director and both wanted to make Kurt as cringy as possible. So therefore, if you can't stand for your main protagonist to be a walking cringe factory, this movie will not be for you, and you can go ahead and turn this film off now. I sat through it. That was a little, it was very, I say a very, it was a little off-putting throughout the entire thing, but that's what it wants to do. It wants, the entire, the entire thing, the entire point this movie is trying to make is the being internet famous isn't all it's cracked up to be. People are watching you all the time. You don't need that verification. Here we go. The short-term version is... Desperate for an online following, a rideshare driver has figured out a deadly plan to go viral, and he will stop at nothing to get his five minutes of fame. Now, all right, here we go, the more in-depth version from me and also probably Wikipedia. So, the film starts off with lots of clips of Kurt pretty much following any trend that could possibly happen on YouTube. He goes through... What is it? He goes through... Uh, reviewing coffee he goes through uh, trying to do video game rage he uh he goes through several different attempts to be famous i'm gonna try it just reading from wikipedia first let's just use it this way a young man named kurt Kunkel is obsessed with being a social media star and becoming viral a child who used to babysit Bobby is now an internet celebrity who frequently makes live streams and has higher viewer numbers, making Kurt jealous. Kurt finds, a, Kurt finds work as a driver for a rideshare app called Spree, then fits out his car with cameras and begins a new live stream titled The Lesson, where he instructs viewers on how to become famous on social media. We're going to stop here after the first paragraph from Wikipedia. Once again, he's tried so many times to become famous, and he's like 90% of all influencers, influencers, people who are making videos on YouTube, either out of wanting to become famous, or just someone who's they're just making videos. People ask for my opinions on things, so I post it out here so I can just forward it to them without typing an entire friggin' summary. He's been trying to get famous for so long, and now he's come up with this idea, idea called The Lesson. Hashtag The Lesson. And he will hammer this home so hard the hashtag the lesson because the the main idea for becoming famous is getting something trending which he's never done so kurt starts picking up passengers first uh he has his card ri uh, fixed up with i think two side cameras and a front camera and he is literally he's trying to talk to them about what they think like how to become famous he picks up a racist this is his first person and uh the only person watching him early on is bobby and bobby is once again as previously stated in the wikipedia article we're gonna do it we're gonna keep reading this way kurt starts picking up passengers and killing them with poison water bottles that he hands out hands out in his car to gain attention despite this he doesn't gain any viewers besides bobby who believes the killings are fake one of the passengers kurt accepts is jesse adams a comedian with a large social media following kurt is awestruck by jesse she is unimpressed by kurt and his obsession with gaining followers and leaves the ride kurt later learns that jesse will be performing in a comedy show that will be live streamed to million kurt goes to bobby's house demanding that bobby share kurt's stream but bobby refuses and starts live streaming their argument attracting a large audience kurt then kills bobby and takes his gun before live streaming for bobby's fans who assume the murder is fake so next paragraph we'll discuss it he picks up like four people before actually going to no 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 he picks up way more he picks up like seven people maybe something like that he picks up like the, like i said the racist he picks up a lawyer he picks up um a meathead that's when jesse comes in he doesn't know who jesse is to begin with 
Uh, the meathead is trying to hit on her, so he brings her in, whatever. But it doesn't show the fact that all these water bottles are poisoned until the first person takes a drink. And it shows him making a YouTube video that's probably either already live of him injecting it, injecting all the water bottles in the back left with this substance and hot gluing the outside of it and rolling it to make sure it's flat. Which is a really clever reveal, and it's a good reveal because you don't... When you read the premise of the film, you assume that he's going to, you know, pull over to the side of the road or turn around, shoot him, stab him, all the stuff that, you know, killers do. But he doesn't, and it's a good reveal. So they do an excellent job of that. Uh, he doesn't know she's famous until the meathead says, hey, she's famous. She, uh, all eyes on me, do you not know this? Blah, 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 blah. So he, she originally doesn't want to get in the car because the meathead, who is manspreading the entire back seat, like I understand you want your your villains to be villains, or you don't want your people, you want people to not be liked, so you're going to put things to an extreme. But God, dude, if I'm manspreading to the point where I'm hearing my hips pop, you got a problem, homie. Or maybe you're just blessed. God bless you to whoever has to deal with that. Next paragraph, I think I covered pretty much everything. There's, oh, no, no, no. There's an amazing, there's an amazing bit, amazing bit of filming. It's a really clever kill, I, I personally think. It's a little bit cheesy. You can tell the funding wasn't necessarily all there. But um, he picks up three people because he has like two total, he has two total viewers right now. And Bobby, his person he's babysat and who is now actually famous, he picks up three people. He says, you think you think what I did before was awesome? Watch this. I'm going for it. He picks up three people. They're all drunk. He ends up taking them to a construction yard, makes his uh, sunroof go forward. They begin to stand up, and you can see something that looks like it's low roll. Um, you can see that it looks like it's a low setting, like bridge-like substance, where you're assuming that they're going to be decapitated. They don't. Uh, it's like a good little fake out. The first, uh, he puts somebody up front who's digging him, and uh, he really tries to get the shock factor of rolling back the moonroof on these three drunk, two of the three drunks. They're stuck, and he honks his horn or something like that, and you just see large dogs run on top of his car and begin gnawing through the top two people as he turns to his drunk passenger in his uh, drunk person in his passenger seat with a drill gun and just you know so that's probably the most clever kill i thought in the film and then it shows him literally going to a car wash with his entire car covered in it by the way he's been giving he's been once again praising the lesson the entire time while doing these horrendous acts after he kills bobby he goes to bobby's room and makes sure that he sets up bobby's computer to pretty much raid his stream he's now getting four thousand people watching after this kurt's father asked him for a ride to a to, the, to a club where he is performing claiming if, that a famous dj called uno will be there and promising that the dj will tag kurt in a video a photo sorry when kurt picks up chris and takes him to the club he approaches uno she initially refuses refuses to tag him then asks him to take her to a taco truck with the premise of tagging while waiting for kurt to get her some food from the truck uno discovers bobby's gun and poses with it on a live stream before drinking some of the poisoned water and passing out after realizing this kurt attempts to drive away but is stopped by two police officers who grow suspicious of him it is revealed that Kurt's murders have already become known to the public, with Kurt being called the rideshare killer, after police are unable to identify him. Chris's father is played by David Arquette, which we know from... What? What movie? I don't... No, I'm just kidding. David Arquette, he's also, for me, he's famous for wrestling, but yeah, now that I'm back into the horror biz, he's also famous for the, all, most of the Scream movies. And a scary movie, I think. <laughs> he's a washed up comedian who's trying to work at a club and get a little bit of money. I think he's either a club or a DJ, it doesn't matter. Uh, whoever plays Uno is fantastic. She does a really good job of like that comedy aspect. Uh, just taco truck, I need to go to LA taco truck. Just that's all she cares about. And then posing with this gun. You can tell he has, absolutely, he 
cannot stand his father. You can tell he's having, he's had issues with him somehow, some way. He tries to get rid of the evidence by throwing out the water bottle that Uno drank and at the, at the taco stand, two police officers walk forward and, uh, are quizzing him on it. He's, yeah, pretty much they, that covered everything. There's nothing really like between that and there. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uno, having survived drinking the poison water, wakes up and panics, shoots dead one of the officers before fleeing. Kurt tries to flee, but he too is pursued by more police, forcing him to escape while crashing his car through a homeless camp. With Kurt's murders becoming more well-known, Spree is temporarily shut down. Spree, the app, by the way, is temporarily shut down to allow an investigation to take place. Jess begins her stream performing a bit about her encounter with Kurt and how disgusted she is by people's desperation for social media fame before concluding her set by destroying her phone on stage. Followed by a mic drop, her action caused her speech to go viral. After getting drunk, she is picked up by Kurt via another rideshare app called GoGo, with Kurt having killed the previous driver. Kurt gloats... That Jesse destroyed her phone on stage and she has no way of calling for help. She tries to escape after learning that he, learning he is taking her to his house. He has an excellent delivery line whenever he's he goes to the he goes to the comedy club to where she's gonna be performing. All you see behind what seems to be behind curtains, or he's standing somewhere where she clearly can't see him, hearing her rag on his rag on him trying to become famous because he says follow for follow out loud which i thought was already out i i don't use that crap i don't know anything about that doesn't matter he's holding bobby's gun which is not a small gun it's a big freaking pistol uh holding it saying it's uh it's amazing how our our stars have aligned my big night and your big night on the same night and he's just sitting there with this gun in camera frame, so he's doing, you know, the entire time. He hops in the car that she, he steals, he's, he hops in his stolen car and begins to drive off. And he talks about how much he's changed in the past couple of hours. He's like, your set was really eye-opening. I think, I think instead of becoming famous, I just want to, I just want to spread love, you know, spread love. And uh, he slowly starts to leak out the fact that uh, what if we just had a leaked sex tape? Wouldn't that be crazy? She, she's just excuse me. I think I think I want to get out. You've you've passed my house. It's like you you said you were taking me home. Oh, I did. I am. I am. I am taking you to my home. And his his drop his his seriousness. Out of this kind of like that cringe lord, like I don't know, that Stay Puff Marshmallow Man style face of just the entire film into this serious, like I will become famous, and it's not going to be the way that anyone wants to see. He does that. Oh, that's all I'm saying. He does an excellent job there. Final paragraph. Let's get it to the end. Unable to get out of the car, Jesse garrotes Kurt with a charging cable, causing the crash. But, but Kurt recovers and beats Jesse unconscious. He arrives at his house and places Jesse's unconscious body outside before requesting by his eager, his now eager viewers to... Bah, that's, not, that's not right. That is inaccurate, actually, Wikipedia. I would change that if I were young. What actually happens, he gets, he gets to the house places jesse's unconscious body outside that's correct he posts a poll allowing his now almost fifty thousand viewers which is a lot uh duh um, even for most streamers like all streamers he's a worldwide he's a worldwide phenomenon but he posts a poll saying fuck mary kill and his audience i guess still not believing this is real or now that it's getting out are all wanting to see his numbers go up and up and up and up, so they vote to kill her. He does not. He takes the poll and follows whatever his viewers want from him. Distracted by a faulty camera, Kurt doesn't notice Jesse regaining consciousness. She manages to take control of the car and crash into Kurt's house while trying to run him over. Kurt flees into the house while Jesse is confronted by an intoxicated 
Chris, his father. The pair discovers Kurt's dead mother who had been killed by Kurt at the start of this live stream. Kurt shoots his father dead and tries to kill Jesse, but she pins him to the wall with a car and beats him to death with his own phone. She takes a selfie with his dead body and posts it on her Instagram account. Jesse becomes a nationwide star after taking credit for disrupting Kurt's rampage while Kurt and his killing become revered in small corners of the internet. I don't know if I like this format. It's a little clunky. Of course, it's my first time ever trying it, but we might tweak it and try to fix it. The ending of the film fell off for me. I think the best kills were in the middle. She crashes the car into him after trying to leave. The reveal that he killed his mother at the beginning means almost nothing except for the fact that he wasn't... He didn't film that, so that wasn't the reason... He wasn't doing these kills to become famous. They were just a part of the attempt, if that makes sense. Because he killed his mom off camera. Strangled her or something. I don't know. Maybe he injected her. I don't. It doesn't show. She's killed off screen. Jesse runs the car into him. He lands on top of it. They try to go for a jump scare because the live stream... Uh, told her to check even though someone sent in a donation telling Kurt that he was an idiot for getting out of the car because he saw that Jesse was no longer there this person not this person different person actually all the director technically but you know it's what the movie's supposed to be about is people watching this live stream uh, telling Jesse to check on Kurt to see if make sure he's dead so she goes over there he tries to reach out for her because it's a horror movie and they're always going to try that and she takes his phone and beats him in the head with it and then holds him up by his hair, takes a picture. She gets becomes famous, just like I just said. Let's talk about the plot. I thought the plot's a great idea. If you're following a main character for that long, you want them to be a little cool, you know? In Creep, and I hate that I do this with a lot of found flicks, he's, he is able to pull off, he's able to pull off cringe and creepy really well. I feel like Kurt from Kurt's world only hit cre only hit cringe and it was their goal and that's what confuses me. I understand like uh, I watched somebody else's video on this saying that they wanted they wanted Kurt to be they wanted Kurt to be uncool so people wouldn't use this people wouldn't use this as an excuse to do this. No one's going to do this. No normal, no person in their correct mind state will ever do this. It's apparently it's supposed to be a comedy. It doesn't say it in Hulu. It says it's a horror movie and it's horror slash comedy. Uh, I like I said, okay, we'll give, we'll stick to the plot. The the premise of the plot is good. We'll give it an eight. I don't like I don't like following someone around that can't. I wouldn't want to be in the room with. For a conversation. If I can't relate to this character, I'm someone who's filming stuff on YouTube just to film stuff on YouTube. You can't enjoy following the character. At least I couldn't. Maybe other people have a, a more open mindset towards that, but man, that was it was hard sometimes to finish the film. Like the kills were great. So plot, I'm giving an eight, I'll keep it at an eight. Scares, like I said, there's two, a lot of the, we'll do scares slash kills, I guess, for this one. Some of the kills are really clever. I thought the water, uh, like the reveal of the water bottle being poisoned was an excellent, was an excellent bit of editing. So it's not scary. There are no good scares in the film, but I'll say some of the kills are interesting with what they were able to do. Even was scares of four. Like it wasn't, once again, it wasn't scary. And then you can't take the main character seriously. The threat, he comes off unthreatening. And then he'll, he, all of his, other, all of his beginning kills are the snake route of sneaking to get to that point. Like sneaking, aka poisoning them with something that they had no idea could possibly be poisoned. So he doesn't come off as a threat until the second half where you see him literally well, he's still attacking people under the influence, so it's still people who are weakened, which is what a lot of serial killers would do. They would go to bars, they would uh, target women pretending to be hurt. So, I give the threat a five. Is it for newbies? I don't know. If this is one of your first horror films, you're going to assume that all villains are cringy. So, maybe. I'm not sure on that. Do I recommend this movie? Not really. Um, if you... I. If you want to support Joe Curie, 
absolutely watch this film and let him be in as much stuff as he possibly can. Because if he wants, if he dedicates this much to filming as that character, he'll do amazing things. Because uh, apparently in the DVD extras, it's just him recording himself as this character for hours. Him playing like rage games, stuff like that. And he he really tried. So if you if you want to support Joe Curie, give it a chance. I I can't recommend this. I'm giving it a five and a half just because Curie's in it and the plot was interesting. Or it could have the idea of the plot is interesting. Yeah, so that's that's what I'll give Spree. Give it a chance if you want. It's just they struggle on a couple of things and I don't think I could look past it. And they did exactly what their director and he, him wanted to do, and that's all you can ask from your that's all you can ask from your actors and your directors. I hope you all have a good one. That is number three. We have twenty eight to go. Make sure you you know like, subscribe, all those fun things. And uh, sorry, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all those whatevers. If you hear anybody say what did you, what did you hear about Spree, send them this video, and it'll tell you all of the entire film, which I'll hopefully be able to timestamp. I think I'll learn how to do that. They'll hear the overall. They'll you can hear the rating, or you can hear the you can get to the quick part, see the trailer, or link the trailer below, and they get my overall uh, scores at the end of it. And if you want to tell me what you what you liked about it, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. Hope you all have a great day. Take care. Stay scared. Bye.